a very happy Galanaceous Day to all you Yanks out there, and a very happy general sort of day to everyone else. This is Un with more Princess Crown, and we are on our way to the Dark Forest Tower, where it is believed that our sister Ariel is being held. Nothing happens on the way there, so we'll just cube wipe on over to the entrance where we encounter Leon. And, uh, Leon wonders what Gradriel's doing here, understandably enough. And Gradriel tells him what's going on with Ariel. And wonders if Leon is here to investigate the appearance of demons throughout the land. That is indeed the case. And, uh, Leon explains that, uh, there is magical force emanating from the tower. And it's going to open up the world of spirits. Which is not good. Because that's where the Demon King lives. And uh, Leon thinks that uh, the sorceress is taking Ariel to the, uh, to the spirit world in order to give her to the Demon King uh, because it requires royal blood in order to free the Demon King from his chains and bring him to this world. Well, Gradriel will have no part of that, so she's going to try and bust down the door, get in there, and uh, rescue her sister. Unfortunately, the seal on the tower is a little too strong for Gradriel, so Leon, being the major out here, is going to take a shot at it. And voila! But he says she must have loosened it up for him a little. He's a nice fella. Well, Leon and Gradriel are going to take separate paths and uh, try and cover more ground. So they wish each other well, and uh, we'll go their separate ways. And here is our first tower dungeon. It's a fairly straight shot, but uh, there are a couple of wrinkles in it, which we will uh, cover when we get to them. In the meantime, our first random encounter is goblins. Really? Well, we certainly don't need to see any more of those fights, so uh, we'll just skip over that one. And on some of the tower floors, there will be uh, side rooms like that, which are just like the ones in caves. They contain a little bit of treasure. Generally, nothing too exciting, so we'll skip over that. And here's something more interesting, our very first Chaotic Eye. Although they don't quite have the traditional shape, these guys are pretty much the beholders of the Princess Crown world. They have eye beams with various uh, effects, you know, damage, fire, and so on. Uh, when you knock them down, they leave behind a skin like that, sort of a, a hollow body. And to be on the safe side, it's a good idea to give that skin a whack, because... Uh, That'll clear it from the stage. Otherwise, it'll eventually explode if memory serves me right, and you don't really want it going off in your face. Now, these guys can do pretty good damage, uh, and the uh, whole skin shedding thing can make it hard to do a lot of damage to them at one time, but uh, they're not too bad, just more of an annoyance than anything really, because they don't have a whole lot of health. You can see how much uh, we've already taken off of it. And it really doesn't have a very high max to begin with. A couple petrifications are slowing things down here, but uh, one more hit'll do it. And it's good for a level. <laughs> An eye scroll, how appropriate. Well, onward and upward. Now, sometimes you'll see uh, side staircases like this. And finding the right path with the side staircases is important, because otherwise... You will sometimes run into gaps in the floor that are not indicated on the map, and they can impede your progress. It's a very small gap. You think Gradriel could just hop it, but 
Like Bionic Commando, there's no jump in this game. What is a frogger even doing here? we have another gap in the floor, so we'll need to uh, go down a floor, uh, over and up. So you see how uh, sometimes you have to take slightly uh, detourish sort of paths in the towers, but it's never rocket surgery. I accidentally picked up a stomach potion during all that, which I don't really need. Well, aside from the chaotic eye, the uh, random encounters in this dungeon have really been pretty pedestrian. Oh well, just gotta keep climbing. Oh, here's something different. Apparently, poltergeists have become random encounters. We haven't seen one of these since the scripted battle way back in Cemetery, so we'll leave this one in. Well, there's really nothing especially different about this one uh, compared to the one we fought in Cemetery. Just lots of projectile-based attacks, whether it be uh, you know, the possessed objects or uh, the occasional round of fireballs. Come on, Arya, I don't need all these stomach potions. Bring me something good. If you get the distance just right, you can often sure you can these guys uh, through their barriers, but the spacing is definitely tricky. It's really sort of annoying how much health these guys have. Landed a few good uh, uppercuts on him, and uh, one of them, I think, was a critical. He's still kicking. But not anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. See if we need to go up here. And that's a negative.
Sometimes the most straightforward path is the correct one. And this uh, side staircase here should take us to the very top, if I'm not mistaken. And the path dead ends there, so uh, let's give that door a try. What's this? Sister! And yes, it's Ariel. Or perhaps not. You! What have you done to my sister? Well, the sorceress just kind of makes fun of Gradriel for being a tomboy and says she hasn't been around the classy castle crowd in a while. With that, Gradriel finally realizes that is Ariel. Ariel's like, psh, took you long enough. And she is going to save the world of mortals by uh, bringing the Demon King into it. And Ariel points out that the pattern beneath Gradriel's feet is in fact the opening to the spirit world. And with the assistance of Gradriel's royal blood, she is going to uh, open that gateway to the spirit world, bring the Demon King through, and raise some hell. Gradriel's having no part of that, predictably enough. And we've got a fight on our hands. Versus Evil Ariel, as the game puts it. Now there's her super, in which she just uh, summons some giant scorpions at you. Does good damage if it hits, but pretty easy to avoid. You can jump over them or option select right through them. Anyway, Evil Ariel's attacks are uh, mostly a combination of fire magic and uh, melee attacks assisted by the uh, Grimoire Larva. Her fire attacks do pretty good damage, but nothing we can't handle. Larva, on the other hand, is mostly used for counter-attacks and the occasional biting, uh, which doesn't do nearly as much damage as the fire attacks, but can be annoying in its own right. All in all, though, I'd say this really isn't that hard a boss fight. Uh, that potion I just picked up there, with kind of the eyeball-looking label on it, that is an invincibility potion. Uh, absolutely nothing can damage you while it's in effect. It lasts, I believe, about 20-30 seconds. So, a really good item. We'll be hanging on to that one. Another thing that makes Ariel pretty manageable, as you may have noticed, it's pretty easy to interrupt her uh, criticals as long as you're close. You can just whack her right out of that. Keep the scorpions off your back. And as you can see, while she has a decent amount of hit points, uh, they don't take all that long to whittle down. Well, one more good hit ought to do it. And blow! Ariel admits Gradriel is pretty tough, but says the gate to the spirit world is going to open and nothing can stop it now. But hey, Leon to the rescue. Well, he's just gonna bust out a little magic and restore Ariel to her usual self. Gradriel goes to confirm that Ariel is okay. And Ariel is unharmed, but as you might expect, she's feeling a little remorseful for everything she did under the influence of Larva. But Leon says we're gonna have to deal with all that later, because the gate to the spirit world is indeed opening, and they'd better get the hell out of there. On the way out, Leon has a little run-in with Larva, and I'm sure that'll end well. Meanwhile, the gate is indeed beginning to open, and I'm sure that'll work out just fine, too.
Arya warns Gradriel that demons and monsters are pouring out from the top of the tower, and they're attacking the castle. So Gradriel asks to borrow Leon's horse, to which he gives his agreement. Meanwhile, Leon's going to take care of Ariel and get her back to safety. Leon feels something strange. Ariel wonders what's wrong, and Leon says, Bow, it's nothing. Of course, it, nothing will come of that. Meanwhile, we find some uh, knights have been killed near the castle, and that's kind of a bummer. Well, better hurry on back to, uh, back to home base. And there, one of the Cardo Knights welcomes Gradriel back and confirms that demons are indeed attacking the castle, and there's one now. A new challenger approaches. Gradriel notes that he fights like a Cardo Knight, but he doesn't wear the usual armor. And the guy introduces himself as General Gogoda, a former leader of the Cardo Knights. Well, that explains that. Anyway, he's here to help. He's going to take care of the demons out here while Gradriel heads on into the castle. Now, we've got a fairly nasty boss fight up ahead, so I'm going to take a moment here to prepare my active inventory. Let's see. We're going to bring along a GOM scroll and the Golden Gauntlet so we can take advantage of the increased critical rate without risking breaking the gauntlet. Bring along some soup and some toast. We'll keep those potions handy just in case. That ought to do it. Here we have one of the Cardo Knights, along with Jest and I, dealing with the Tarantula. Shouldn't be too big a deal. And Gradriel lets them know that uh, she's fine and Ariel is safe with Leon. And Jest and I knows Leon, so that's cool. And Justin and I lets Gradriel know that uh, Sidrael is upstairs under guard, and the demons have come after her. Meanwhile, on the next floor up, it's Edward. And he calls Gradriel princess, so apparently the uh, jig is up. And Gradriel apologizes for keeping her identity a secret, but Edward says they can talk about that later. Right now, there's a little too much shit going down. Gradriel says, hey, you can't abduct my sister. And this demon uh, says, hey, I smell royal blood. You'll be just fine. So here we have Skulg, and Skulg is the toughest fight we've had in quite a while. He's got lots of magic attacks, and some pretty potent claw attacks, and uh, a very nasty critical. In this particular playthrough, it takes him a while to get up to speed. Uh, for now, he's pretty much just letting me uh, hit him practically at will. But uh, rest assured, get up to speed he will. Another thing about Skulg is that he has a lot more health than it appears. You'll see why before too long. There's me forgetting I need to put my equipment on before I use the GOM scroll on it. That's better. And now that I've got the Golden Gauntlet equipped, Gradriel is going to start busting out criticals like they're going out of style. 
And that is fortunate because if you watch the damage indicators, you'll see that Skulk has pretty high defense. He doesn't take a whole lot of damage from really much of anything. Certainly he can hurt us a lot more than we can hurt him. Yeah. His fire spells hurt even more than uh, evil aerials. Oh! I did not know he could turn around uh, in the middle of casting a spell like that. That screwed me up a bit. Okay, when he drops that multicolored gem, he brings out the Gimp. Drains it dry and restores most of his health. Now, it looks like you should be able to interrupt that, but I assure you, you cannot. You just kind of have to stand there and let him do it. So, yeah. Partway through the fight, he'll recover himself, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it, but fortunately, he can only do that once. One Gimp per Demon. That is, uh, that is the official rules. And, oh, there's a piece of uh, Yggdrasil fruit. I want that. There we go. Hey, no fair. The sure you can is my... Ugh. What kind of juggling going on here? Damn, that hurts. I do enjoy the Golden Gauntlet. In some ways, it's not as nice as having uh, the Silver Gauntlet's, uh, you know, constant attack boost, but you just get so many criticals with the Golden one. Oh, and there's the good defensive uh, necklace. I'll be wanting that, too. Yet another critical. Oh, but it whips. Damn invincibility frames. That's more like it. I really didn't think that was going to hit. Ah, I wondered when he was going to start using his critical. You do not want to eat that. It will ruin your shit. Now right here, I action select through the critical, and I still take one hit from it, and that only does 20 damage, but if you get caught by the brunt of the thing, then uh, it will hit you a bunch of times, and those 20s will add up really fast. Well, one more good hit ought to do it, but uh, I don't want to gamble there. We'll, uh, yeah.
Well, Skulk is actually kind of impressed with Gradriel, but he says it's not nearly enough because he can never be killed by the Sword of Man. Well, Gradriel's not exactly a man, but I guess we're not getting off with the Eowyn Claws this time. Onward to Sidriel's room, where a Cardo Knight says a demon just flew in, uh, cast a paralysis on him, and flew off to the terrace with Sidriel. Oh, that's not good. Skog says his lord will soon be released. Meanwhile, Golgotha arrives on the scene. Skog says he'd better stay back if he cares for Sidriel's life. Gradriel says you should let her go. I'm the princess around here. Skog finds that kind of interesting, but, uh... No matter. Royal blood is in Sidriel as well, and that'll's good enough for him. And Golgota seems to have taken the worst of that. And Gradriel says that Golgota has been mortally wounded and sacrificed himself. And Edward admits that Golgota was his father. And here we are off in the uh, spirit world. Sidriel doesn't know what the fuck. And the mysterious voice says, You've entered my realm, the world of spirits. She's come to uh, set him free. And he introduces himself as the king of demons, Vograd. He's been chained for a thousand years, but now his suffering will come to an end. Sidriel says, No, she'll never free the demon king. Bograd's a little bit pissed at that, and says, you don't know who you're messing with here. Sidriel says, yeah, I do, uh, you know, that's why I'm not going to help you. And Vograd says, fine, I just have to get a hold of the book Larva and uh, take over your mind. Uh, back at the castle, Justin and I explains to Gradriel that it was Ariel who freed the book Larva from its chains under the castle. And Justin I says that uh, 25 years ago, Golgotha was similarly possessed by Larva. Quain says that the demons have been cleared out and Edward's about to head out from the castle. And Gradriel wants to go meet him before he takes off. Now, right here, I try and use some E plus 1 scrolls on the uh, defense necklace, and it doesn't seem to work. I don't know if it's a bug, or if you're just not actually able to enchant the necklace, or what the deal is. But anyway, I burn two E plus 1 scrolls on it, and nothing happens. Oh well. I'll still be hanging on to that, I'll just have to be very careful about it breaking. So I'll put the rest of my E-plus ones into the Golden Gauntlet. Here at the castle entrance, uh, Gradriel thanks Edward and expresses her condolences for what happened to Golgota. And she says that it wasn't his fault for what happened 25 years ago because Golgota was uh, possessed by larva. And Edward is gonna head off and meet a dragon friend of his called Heindel. And uh, Edward thinks Heindel will be able to uh, tell him more about his father. So they exchange their farewells and get ready to go on their separate ways and they'll meet again sometime soon. And now we head up to Ariel's room 
where she's feeling miserable about all the knights she killed and causing the abduction of Sidrail while she was under the possession of Larva. And Gradriel assures her that uh, she's going to go rescue Sidrail. Ariel says that uh, she's pretty sure that Sidriel was taken to the Black Forest Tower just like she was herself. And Gradriel tells her to buck up and, uh, you know, try not to sweat everything that happened while she was possessed. She couldn't help it. You know, even though the whole thing totally was her fault when you really think about it. Oh well. Moving along, uh, although I neglect to actually do so, uh, you can talk to Quain about Golgota, and he'll say that although Golgota was a great hero, uh, he never really lived down being possessed by Larva 25 years ago, and so people still call him a demon, and Edward the son of a demon. Anyway, we're gonna head back to Jest and I. And he fears the worst because she's still wearing her adventuring clothes. And Gradriel says, sorry, I gotta go back to the Black Forest Tower to rescue my sister. Justin and I wants to send the Royal Guard with her, but Gradriel says that the Cardo Knights need to stay behind and protect the castle. Gradriel says she's gonna go try and figure out uh, a way to use the Black Forest Tower to enter the uh, spirit world. And he is pl uh, she is placing uh, governing power in Justin I's hands while she's away, because she doesn't want to burden Ariel with it right now. At any rate, that is about enough for today. Uh, once again, I'd like to wish a happy Thanksgiving to anyone for whom that is relevant, and a good day in general to everyone else. I appreciate your watching. We've got a little side questing to do before we head out to uh, the Black Forest Tower once more, so we'll pick up there. In the meantime, this is Zun, always a pleasure, and I'll see you again soon.